Hey, me and Matt here. This is Killer Kyle, and welcome to our second episode installment of Wheels of Fury. And we're going to be doing WrestleMania Backlash. This is going to be interesting because, I mean, most of the matches that we're going to see is basically reunion matches from WrestleMania 38. Pretty much. So. I mean, look, yeah. SmackDown is tonight, right now, actually, so as we speak. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting, I guess. And there's going to be definitely some words, maybe from you, but mostly from me. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, well, nothing to it, but let's get to it. <laughs> start with this match. So we have Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. We'll talk about him having a match with a mystery opponent. And I think hell froze over, like I said in our play by play for WrestleMania, because it was the return of not only Cody Rhodes, but the American Nightmare here. Yeah. There was well, we had pretty much covered a lot of what was going on over the last little while regarding rumor of Cody going back to WWE. And it was like, oh, Cody's in talks, talks fell through, Cody signed with WWE, a multi year deal. And it's like, okay, what's going on? What's the truth? Is it actually happening? And then, you know, is it just, oh, they're just trying to keep us on our toes. It's, you know, not actually Cody. It's somebody else. And then to hear, you know, wrestling has more than one royal family. It's like, oh, shit, that actually is Cody. <laughs> I think a lot of, well, Matt definitely was surprised. And I think a lot of people were surprised. One, not only of the fact that Cody actually did return. And two, it would be under the American Nightmare persona, if you will. I really don't think it was AEW had the rights to that gimmick, that persona of Cody's. It was Cody's all along, so he had the freedom to use it wherever he decided to go and he opted to go back to WWE and which is fine it's actually pretty cool to see him back in WWE I myself didn't ever think I could see Cody back in WWE again but like Matt said pretty much hell froze over and he returned and they had a, a spectacular match at Wrestlemania Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's the thing. You know, Cody comes back. And, you know, good on the WWE for actually doing this. Because we talked about Royal Rumble. We talked about hardcore country Mickey James. Coming into the ring with the Impact title. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of blur the lines a little bit with Cody Rhodes on Miz TV <laughs> using the term professional wrestling of course you know a professional wrestler rather Miz saying superstar you know a belt is what pulls your pants up whatever yeah so I mean there's that it's like I don't know it, it's just it's weird to me because we're starting to see the professional wrestling <laughs> Back in WWE. Yeah, like the, the word. The word professional wrestling itself. Like you can say sports entertainment, whatever. But when you come down to the denny gritty, it was always about, yeah, the spectacle, mm. sure. But it was always about professional wrestling. Yeah, I mean, the word wrestling 
so in the title of your company, you can call it sports entertainment all the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. It's still fucking wrestling, god damn it. Hell yeah. Still real to me, damn it. And so, I mean, look, you want to push Cody, that's fine, <laughs> but in my opinion, there has to be a way for Seth Rollins to get his. Yeah. I honestly think that Seth is going to find a way to win at this match. Right. I mean, nothing to take away from Cody. Cody had a hell of a match back at WWE for all this time. And so, yeah, you know what? I'm sure they'll have another match, maybe at Hell in a Cell. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, it's going to be Seth Rollins. Um, yeah, I'll take Seth, too. Just have it be one and one, and then have a rubber match like that match at Mary Ellen so, and you know, then Cody can move on to getting closer to the WWE Universal Championship. Who he would rival with next, I don't know. Maybe Miz? That'd be interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where. I think they're going. Yeah. Cody Rhodes versus The Miz. And I mean, when, you know, it's kind of, as they say, apropos, you have Cody as the guy in Legacy, <laughs> when you have The Miz, who is fresh in the company. Yeah. And then he joins John Morrison. Yeah. And now... And the Miz is on his own. He stole his badass motherfucker as <laughs> ever. Yeah. And Cody's back. I would like to see that match happen. Yeah. And the way those two interacted was money. So, let's see that match. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, for me, it's still going to be Seth Rollins. Right. And hell, maybe the Miz will cost Cody. Maybe who knows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get the ball rolling a little more to get to Cody versus Miss. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have this rematch. And there was a rumor that they were going to have a few going. And eventually, Ronda Rousey will get the SmackDown Women's Championship. So, you have this match. I quit match. Charlotte Horse Fast Flair versus Valerie Ronda Rousey. <coughs> you fucked the dog with having the Flair friend of Charles Robinson at the WrestleMania match. And I will say it was a good match up until the end. Like, did you really have to protect her? Like, seriously? This was the point of having new superstars in your company when you have Charlotte Flair as your champion. And you keep her as the champion. You would have had it happen at WrestleMania 34. And you had it happen at WrestleMania 37. And now, 38, sorry. You had it be real Ripley. At WrestleMania 35, or no, 36. See, I'm going all over the place. She doesn't need the SmackDown Championship any fucking more. If you're going to put the belt on Ronda Rousey, put it on Ronda Rousey right fucking now. Because I know we can wait till hell in the cell. I know that can happen. But you have her back in that WWE. It's time. 
to get that belt off of that plastic bimbo and let have Ronda Rousey fire to get her due. It just pisses me off that you're protecting Charlotte Flair and you're keeping the title on her and you're having her as your champion all the fucking time and you have a lot of selection. You're gonna have a match with her and Liv Morgan. That failed. Her match with Alexa Bliss. That failed. You cannot tell me there is no other woman in that company that can hold on to that title. And then, let's talk about that thing with her and Becky Lynch trading the belts. When Ashley Flair would not do business for Becky Quinn. And they had a big blowout and now they're no longer best friends. Yes, this is a shoot. Why? Because this was unnecessary. You were going into business for yourself. I want to see why did Rousey go over? There was no reason why she can't. Unless you have something big, put the belt on her right there and then. So, anyways, uh, there is no discernible logical reasoning behind anything that has gone on. When you had Charlotte and Becky and Rhonda leading into their triple threat match at WrestleMania 35, the build up for that was good. The build up for th to WrestleMania 38 was eh, okay. I mean you have Charlotte say some things about Rhonda, you have Rhonda say some things about Charlotte. And all I know they got physical and so on and so on. And then you head into the match and it was good and then yeah. Donkey fucked it up the ass with that one. <coughs> and now you're going into an I quit match with the, these two. Okay, cool, fine, whatever. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. Because all you're doing is you're spurred feeding us. Charlotte Flair as the champion. And when she can lose, she can actually lose. But for some fucking reason, I, I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Why? So she could go in the ring and do a, a, a promo like William Shatner and be fucking stupid and have some... Uh, uh, this, to me, is an example of the WWE a. Not taking a chance and B. Being lazy. Lazy? No. Not doing anything different? Eh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have Bobby Lashley against Omos. Exactly. And their match at WrestleMania was fairly decent. You know, it wasn't great, it wasn't terrible, it was somewhere in the middle. Having Lashley beat Omos was like, holy shit, who the fuck would have seen that coming? Yeah. And then you have 
MVP side with Omos. It's like, okay, Omos has been doing very good on his own. He's been showing more personality. They're giving him time on the mic, which is great. He could use some work with that, but you know, it's good. Yeah. And I honestly think MVP is that right fit to push Omas further and get him to a higher point. Yeah. In his career. Not saying that there isn't anybody that or anybody else that could have done it. It's just, aside from MVP, like, with that storyline, it works. If you didn't do use MVP, I don't really know who else you could use in that kind of managerial role for Omos that would make sense. It has been a very, very long time since you had a giant in WWE. When Paul White left, I don't think you ever would have thought to see one again. Yeah. And then Omos came in as a bodyguard. And, you know, that was like well underground. Yeah. And then a few years later, maybe was two years later, who knows, coming in and Feuding with, well, actually, teaming with AJ Styles. Yeah. Which was interesting in itself. Why they got rid of Joseph Park, I'll never fucking know. Yeah. He had, like, a few on screen appearances, and then I think he's still with the company uh, doing what? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's that. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a good match for sure. It's just, I know a lot of people were like, well, why did Bobby go over? Bobby's older. Why not put the younger talent over? And this is putting the younger talent over. And that's the truth. It, you know, yeah, Bobby won at WrestleMania. But look at the build-up to WrestleMania backlash. Yeah. Almost looks stronger. <laughs> And yes, he is a believable giant, obviously. Right. This guy is money. Oh, yeah. And I think that, I honestly believe that, like the Seth Rollins Cody Rhodes match, I'm going to say almost. Interesting, because when watching that match at WrestleMania 38, it was like, uh... It's going to be another one and done squash. Omos is going to beat Bobby, and then Omos is going to move on to somebody else, and then when Bobby beat him, it's like, okay, that just fucking happened. Now, will it be different this time around, heading into WrestleMania Backlash? Perhaps. MVP is going to be the X Factor. MVP will more than likely have an involvement of some kind to help Omos win. So, I mean, can you have Lashley win again? Sure. Would it make sense? Eh, not so much. I think if you're going to have Omos be, you know, a legitimate threat going forward, like, he, he's been a a legitimate threat already, but like to get him to that next level, have him beat Lashley, and then if you do a, a third match, fine. If not, you know, go on to you can go on to whoever else, but like, yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna be a good match, not a great match to say the least, yeah, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And the thing about it too is like, Lashley's been in the ring with big guys before, so we're like, it's not out of his wheelhouse, so to speak. No, 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 no. And then you also take into consideration that MVP 
is now almost his mouthpiece. Yeah. And it's not like he's a bad talker. No. But to have MVP in his corner, MVP is one of the most decorated wrestlers in the company. <laughs> and you take him and you take his career and impact and New Japan and wherever else he was in. And you go, this guy can make anybody. And I mean, you can see almost as the champion in the future. Whenever they put the World Universal fucking Heavyweight title together. Yeah. I can see almost get the title <laughs> at some point. Yes, I know. Andre the Giant didn't really have the title for all of, about a second. Again, another fucked up storyline. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, it's gonna be a good match for sure. Yeah. of somebody's career going down the fucking toilet Happy Corbin I mean here's a guy that was on top in NXT crushing it killing it Lone Wolf badass mofo that would slap his own mother if she looked at him the wrong fucking way and you put him on the main roster, he was doing well, and then, well, you have him win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, fine. You had him win money in the bank, I fucked it up with that one. And then you have him as Corporal Snyder, I mean, Corp and Corp, or Corp, or what, what the fuck do they call him? I know who you're fucking talking about. Had Corbin as an authority figure. Yeah. That blew... That blew harder than a whale's blowhole. Mm -hmm. He had King Corbin. Hey, that was... Well, it was okay, but... Well, it was okay right up until... Shinsuke Nakamura came along. Then I turned into a fucking train wreck. And it's been, it's been a fucking train wreck ever since. You bring back Riddick Moss after fucking who knows how the fuck long he's gone. He was in NXT, part of Tino Sabatelli. They were a team for a while. They both fucked off whoever the fuck where else. And then here's Moss coming back as... Corbin's Corp Chester. Joke to the joke, I go fuck yourself. <laughs> Blow me out the ass. And then it's like, oh, I don't want to be your lucky anymore. I'm going to be on my own. I'm going to be my own man. And, uh, fuck. Just shoot me, please. For the love of fucking God, just shoot me, please. I, uh, you've got Corbin on a losing streak, which is, you know, whatever the fuck. You got Mad Cat Moss, it's even called Happy Moss, although that's no better of a fucking name. Though, I mean, he's great in the ring, he's a hell of a talented wrestler. My skills can use a little bit of work, but, you know, I'll digress from that. And it's it's like, don't give a fuck. Don't want to give a fuck. Don't need to give a fuck. Don't have to give a fuck. Don't have to give a fuck. 
just no fucks to give what's-a-fucking-ever. Who, yeah. who wins? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Plain and simple. Reddick Moss. Yeah. Sure. Whatever the hell. rematch from Wrestlemania. We have Edge versus AJ Styles. And despite not having Alter Bridge play Edge to the ring at Wrestlemania, that was a pretty cool entrance, I gotta say that. Yeah. However, this was a good match and it set up for his thing with the Damian Priest. Yeah. The punishment, which I think is like very cool. Considering the past. Yeah. So, yeah, it was called Judgment Day, and people are shitting on that name, but, well, you know, what were what you going to call him, you know? <laughs> I had a friend of mine say that this stable, and it's going to be a stable eventually, is the shits. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> okay, you had Edge in the Brood. Yeah, Gangrel was the leader. And then you had the thing with Zack Ryder and fucking Kurt Hawkins. Edge, edge heads. Edge heads, yeah. And then you mm -hmm. had Rated RKO. So. You also had Edge and Christian in the ministry. Yeah. And so there's, you know, a lot of good things there. So yeah, Edge has the leader. That's pretty fucking awesome. And I think it's awesome. I think I'm gonna enjoy more of it when they bring in somebody else. Yeah. I just wish they wouldn't put Edge in a bird, but there you go. I think that... Yeah, you know what? This is, this is gonna be a very good match, and I will surprise you. As much as I enjoy Judgment Day, and I think they're gonna go places in the future, and like I said with the last two rematches, I think AJ Styles should go over. Yeah. Unless somebody else comes in and screws him over. Yeah. And has Edge win again, which really doesn't make any fucking sense. And I do love Adam Copeland and, you know, Edge, whatever, but whatever. It's, yeah, AJ Styles definitely should get this win. Yeah. If they have a rematch, a rubber match, I should say, at Hell in the Cell, yeah. then that would be cool. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not going to change my answer. Yeah, again, this falls under the same category as before with, like, Cody and Seth and Bobby and Omos. You have AJ win, and then, you know, take it wherever you want and take it after that. Do you know, then have them whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, and, but I think that mm -hmm. WrestleMania 38 match was awesome. It actually was really good. Yeah, so I mean, this should be a good match too. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> First of all, the bloodline. Oh yeah, the bloodline. Yeah, the bloodline versus RK Bro and Drew McIntyre. Now, they were initially going to have RK Bro and the Usos in a tag team championship unification match. We were all like, "What the fuck? Why the fuck are you doing this?" You already did this with the main titles. 
the WWE title, the Universal title. Now what the fuck are you doing with the tag team titles? Then at some point somebody went, all right, let's not do this. We'll move on from it. And then you throw in Roman Reigns and then throw in Drew McIntyre. If you're going to have Roman and Drew go singles, you could have easily gone RK Bro versus the Usos. Fuck, forget about the tag titles. Just have them go straight up uh, tag match. You know, don't you didn't need to unify the titles to begin with. It was a stupid idea to begin with. I'm glad they fucking did away with the idea. And like, okay, you have Matt Riddle versus Jimmy. Riddle beats him. Where Roman get involved, and then the three of them are beating up Randy and Riddle. McIntyre comes out, takes out Jimmy, takes out Jay, you know, and then gets into a fight with Roman and chases him off, and they decided to make it a six man at WrestleMania Backlash. Can somebody explain to me the logic behind this, please? I mean, sure, like, I think. A match with Roman and Drew for the championships would be great. I mean, you clearly have a build started to it, but like, six man? I'm sure it'll be a great match, but like, you're not making much sense with this. Like, Lucy, you have some explaining to do. Seriously, what the for the fastest! So let me get this straight. WrestleMania 38, Roman Reigns. Is now the undisputed World Heavyweight Universal Champion. When the fuck are you gonna match the titles? So you're gonna have Paul Heyman carry two fucking titles to the ring because why? I don't know. And then, you know, you were gonna have the tag team titles merge. Now, unlike Kyle, I thought this was a good idea. Why? Because if you're going to do away with the brand split, you keep the... You have two tag team titles. You have two titles, one brand. You have one singles title, one brand. You can merge the United States title with the Intercontinental title. And everything will be hockey fucking noise. But we have to have... These two titles, still, they, still, universal title, WWE title. And why? Doesn't make any sense. Because, you know, you were going to have RK Bros versus the Usos. And then, you didn't. Now, obviously, how did the cells coming up? You got Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, very good wrestlers. You had them wrestle at WrestleMania 35. <laughs> you had them wrestle at Survivor Series of two years ago, maybe. So, this match, I have no fucks to give. Seriously, I really don't. I, I want to, but I don't. Because all you're doing is you're just pressing all the fun time. You, 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 you know. You know that there should have been a title match. There was a rumor we were going to have Roman Reigns and Shinsuke Nakamura. 
Obviously, I'm not going to put the title on Shinsuke. <laughs> so, honestly, I don't care. I just do not fucking care. Eventually, one singles championship, please. In the meantime, fuck this match. Honestly, how many times are we going to see these two go, like these six, whatever, go at it? It's nothing to take away from these people. I know they're talented. You didn't really need to go there. At all. You, you just have no idea what you had, really. You didn't necessarily have a main event, but you had these take team titles. You could have merged them. You could have had that, but no, we couldn't do that. And for God's sakes, can we please have one single title instead of two? I mean, you fucking did that with Randy Orton in 2014. Get on with that. Please, get the fuck on with that, seriously. Yeah. So, that's going to wrap things up for our WrestleMania Backlash. Retro Clock Meter Times 100 episode. Second episode. Yeah. It was a double banger. Yeah. So, tomorrow, Matt and I will be doing Under Seeds. Play by play. Sunday, we do... WrestleMania Backlash, play by play, and yeah, this was fun. Oh yeah, for sure. Lots of F this, F that, F F F F F F F F anyway. Surprised nobody can hear us. <laughs> they probably can, they just don't give a shit. Yeah. So, for main match. I'm Killer Kyle, and we will see you guys next week. Next time. Next time, yeah, for sure. Yeah, next week, Wheels of Fury. I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing, man. Yeah. I mean, Double or Nothing is... Well, it's at the end of the month, I believe. Well, you got Double or Nothing, and you also got... The Forbidden Door, right? Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything before that. I don't think so. Right. So, we probably will do either World War Three oh, yeah. or in your head, we more than likely do World War Three. If something comes up, then we'll let you guys know about it and then go from there. But more, I think next week will more than likely be a continuation of continuation of year. Yeah. Look back, ninety five with World War Three. Yes, sir. And so we'll see you. Then, there it is. See ya!